Hello guys! Today we will have a quick look at the Sendicon's new smart config tool for the Sendicon's room controllers and the measurement devices. So uh, the smart config is an application that is used on iPhone or iPad to configure the devices. So it's an engineering tool for those controllers and, and, and devices. So the Sendicon's uh, room control range includes both the sensors, smart sensors and the uh, advanced controllers. All of the devices uh, have an optional touchscreen and uh, with the touchscreen you can see the current information. There are four locations for the temperature set points uh, and so on. The devices are available with the built-in temperature, humidity and also with the CO CO2 and VOC measurements. They are connected to BMS either using a BACnet or Modbus or alternatively also we have a wireless interface uh, connections which allows a long range connection to the BMS using the LoRaWAN wireless uh, communication protocol. The controllers, they can be used with a really wide variety of applications. The, the controller application uh, design is very flexible and modular and with, uh, with that design, it can be configured to operate with the FANCO unit controllers, sealed ceilings, beams, zone controls, VAV and, and so on. So we will have another other video later on about the uh, different applications and some examples how we can and where we can use the uh, Centicons uh, room controllers, QRC and TCR range. But how do we actually configure those devices as an engineers? Uh, the the Sendicons devices have a common data structure. So what it means that we have a range of tools that uh, look pretty much similar regardless of what tool you use. So uh, for example, we have a PC-based tool. So uh, on the, on the PC-based configuration tool, uh, we can here on the left hand side on the bottom, we can connect to the device using the either with the Bluetooth dongle set or we can connect using a serial USB cable from your PC and um, then after connection uh, the tool shows the menu structure what you can see on that screen of the, all the configuration parameters available on the on a device. Alternatively you can actually connect to the devices using using the Modbus tool so if you have a Modbus devices you can connect in the end of the network to the, uh, the tool and your PC and then set up the Modbus address to that specific device that you want to configure, connect the device and you get the identical menu what you see it on the PC, uh, PC based tool when you do a local connection. So it's very easy to understand the products once you have uh, configured regardless of uh, which tool the products. The data sheets and documentation also refers to the, all the configuration parameters in exactly the same way. So it is, uh, it is consistent and therefore once you learn the applications functionality, you can apply that for different tools. So today's session is about the iOS configuration tool. So we can connect to iOS tools um, basically using a Bluetooth connections. You can either use the built-in Bluetooth. So on a, on a controller, as you can have a BLE options, which are, have, means that there is a built-in Bluetooth on a, on a device itself. Or you can use the, the Bluetooth device dongle. And with the device dongle, then with the iOS app, you can then connect to the, to the a device and configure the controllers. So what we have here, you can actually see on top right hand corner here where it's highlighted. This is the device configuration tool. And once connected, we can, we can change the settings. Underneath that, you have also the something called Smart View. Smart View is an end user application. So uh, you can load that application to iPad or iPhone. And then using the Bluetooth, you can connect to the controllers that have been configured by the engineers and it will automatically build the, build, build the image of the application and as a user you can easily change the set points, uh, overwrite the fan speed 
and those kind of functionality. But today we will have a look at the, the basically the uh, configuration tools. If we look at the iPhone application, so what I have here is an uh, iPhone where we have a connected, uh, which is it will be connected to those controllers, and I also have a that streaming to the PC, so you will have a clear image of the of the the iPhone screen. So we have uh, two applications. We have a smart view, which is the end user application, and the smart config, which is the configuration tool. So what we do now is we click the, the smart config, and it shows that the the home screen of the smart configuration tool. First of all, we can do the scan and immediately finds the two devices. These are actually the devices you can see on a shelf behind me. These are the two devices that have a built-in Bluetooth and I have found the, uh, those devices. So if I click the connect one of the devices, first, as this is a new connection, it will ask about the pairing of, the, of this Bluetooth device. So I say, yes, I accept that. So I pair to the Bluetooth device and now it's connected. It finds the device name or device type to be QCR1. So it's a A quality controller, CO2 controller. Click the view button and it takes you, takes you to the configuration menu where on the top of the menu, you can see the Bluetooth connect disconnect buttons and a backup restore. Backup and restore are the functions that once you configured one device, you can back it up on your, uh, on your phone and then restore on other device uh, in the same model. So when you have a multiple rooms, it's very easy to copy and paste the application, uh, the configuration from one room to another. Live view. Live view is a, a menu where you can see the live information, the measurements, the outputs, the demand signals, and all that information uh, simply on a one screen. So you can evaluate the, what are the readings, how the control is performing, and uh, in general see what's going on in the, in the controller. Then you have a number of menus, uh, which is uh, same as on the PC-based tools. And, and uh, if you look at the documentation, exactly the same structure as in the documentation. We have uh, the input-output settings, where we configure how the controller inputs and outputs operate. We have a calibration setting, so we can do certain calibration uh, values for the measurements. We have a display settings. So if you have a touch screen, you can, or the LCD screen, you can configure what you display. So on the four locations, you can, uh, you can tailor those to the, your site requirements. You can either show them or not to show. Control, so it's about the uh, control functionality. So on the controllers, so you have a really flexible. So if I go there, you can see there is a quite a few menus. And the main menu is the multi-stage control loop where you can have it uh, as up to six stage uh, temperature control. For example, in this case, we have set up the, the control source to a NTC 10 universal input one. And um, then we can change the, the uh, nominal set points, proportional bands, dead zones and so on, which are typically used in a, in, a, in a control scheme for heating and cooling. If I go back there and go to the input and output settings, for example, on analog inputs, I can easily select on these controllers, you have a two universal inputs and you can select uh, from the universal input mode, how is that controlled? If it's a digital of a cocopite, for example, or if it's an TC10, or maybe it's a not, a not to 10 volt, uh, external CO2 sensor that we are connecting to the system. You click the send, it's config configuration and it's as simple as that. Now, if you if we go back to the menu and for example, if we want to go to the display settings, on the display settings, we have uh, uh, five menus, which are the general, from the general menu, we, for example, can customize the display color. So we have a uh, different um, different uh, uh, color schemes for the display. So we can go green, blue, etc. to the suit the requirements for the architects. Uh, we can set up the display brightness. We can decide, for example, if there is a um, heating mode, cooling mode, uh, icon displayed, if there is a fan display displayed. So is it a touch display or is it uh, adjustable by the users? Uh, if there's a mode, uh, and, and so on. So this is how you go through the 
different uh, uh, configuration settings on, on the display. We can have a four locations to displays. On the location three, we show the CO2. So we have a CO2 being showed. And then the description, the text that shows above that is CO2. Sometimes you want to set it to none. So now there is no display. There is just a CO2 reading with the units of BPM. So if you go to the learning set BPM, if you enable the alarm, so there's an alarm bar, then there is a basically a, a amber red alarm based on the CO2 reading and the limits are 75550 and those limits, the color changes on a display, uh, on, on, on alarm. If we go back to the control screen, as you saw, there is a lot of the different functions. I'm not going into detail now about the controls, but this is about the tool and how you how you work. Once you've done the configuration, just say, stay, click the store non-volatile and that stores the configuration of the controller and it's not non-volatile memory. And maybe after that, what you want to do is to click the backup and this is now backing up the, all the configuration parameters, all the settings, what you have it in a device back to your phone. And it uses the phone's um, user settings to save those so even if you if you reboot your phone etc all those settings are stored on your phone and you can then when you go and connect to a new device you can then use the, the let's give a name now uh, room 26 34 whatever and when you go then to the to a new controller you can click the restore and then you can select the application <coughs> and it downloads the application to the device. So this is how simple it is actually to configure the, the Centicons controllers and the, also the temperature, smart temperature sensors, exactly the same way. The tool identify what product it is and then opens the, the menu or the configuration parameters, what we call JSON file uh, that matches that product and then you can easily change that. Okay, thank you.